I want to share a story about the time my family's house got broken into. It was a really creepy experience. It happened one dark October evening when I was in high school. Back then, whenever I got home from school, I would go up to my room and lie on my bed and read manga. On the day of the break-in, it was just me in the house. My family had gone shopping. So, I shut myself in my room and lost myself in my books. It was actually great. I needed to go to the toilet though, so I left my room. And that is when I noticed something strange. The smell of tobacco smoke. This was really weird since I don't smoke and no one in my family smokes either. And I have never smelt this smell before in my house. So I went in search of the source of the tobacco smell. I began my search in my little sister's room as I noticed that the door was slightly ajar. I pushed open the door and switched on the light. And there before me was a full grown man. This guy was in our house and in my little sister's room. He was holding his shoes in one hand and he was rummaging through my sister's drawers with another hand. I guess that he had taken the shoes off so that he could move around more quietly. My heart stopped and my skin went ice cold, but somehow I managed to ask, What are you doing in here? Despite my fear, he started babbling, creating random excuses, none of which were plausible. It was really crazy. My heart was racing now. I didn't know what to do. So I grabbed him by the arm and I didn't want him to escape and he didn't resist or complain. He just kept silent. Luckily, my granddad lived close by so I led the intruder with me to his house and when we got there, my granddad called the cops. After some time, the police arrived and they filled us in on the details after they interviewed him. It turns out, the man lived in one of the apartments across the street that looked directly into our house. Things got really creepy when he told the police that he had been in our home several times. He said he liked to break in even when there are people in the house. During the police interview, the man broke down and confessed. He said the main purpose of his repeated trespasses was that the fact that he was drawn to my sister. He had some sort of obsession with her. He told the police that the day I apprehended him, he was looking for some of her underwear to take back to his apartment. He said the only reason why he picked my sister was due to the simple fact that she was his type. He confessed to entering other people's homes too, anyone who was his type. He said that the only reason he went unnoticed by the occupants in the house was because he was very careful not to disturb anything or steal a thing and no one knew he was coming or going. It seemed that this guy had an understanding of our family's movements, our schedules and many more and it was clear that he had been watching our house and us for a long time. He knew how to get in easily, he must have researched for a weak point of entry. He had done this many times without being caught, and my guess was that he began to get careless, which was how I was able to catch him. I only caught him due to the cigarette smell. I can't tell you how terrifying it is to find someone standing in a dark room in your house when you are at that age, and I literally have no words for how frightened I was. Of course. We threw away all of my sister's underwear and we decided to get her new clothes too. I mean, how could she feel comfortable wearing anything that man had touched? I think my sister has suffered mentally with this and it's a thing I don't speak to her about. I'm just glad I caught him. Who knows what else he might have wanted to do. Maybe stealing the clothes were just the beginning and I don't even want to think about it.
This happened when I was a student. When I was at university, I was in a club with this girl who was a year younger than me. She really, really liked me back then. She was a nice girl, very popular too, and one day she confessed her love to me. I liked another girl, so I politely refused her advances. And she got really angry, like she was so shocked that I refused her. Due to her reaction, I quit going to the same club we met at. Life went on and we were getting ready to graduate, so my attention turned to job hunting. I graduated and I didn't see her again. Well, the truth is, I did my best to avoid her. I managed to get a job working in Tokyo. I started living alone. It was great. After about three months or so, I came back from work. About midnight. I was trying to make a name for myself, so I was putting in as many hours as I could. I checked my mailbox and I found a letter. It didn't have a stamp on it. I opened it, and it was a letter from her. The girl who liked me that I met at the club back at university. Lots of old memories from university days came up. It was quite nostalgic. The letter read, I still can't forget about you. It was written like she was angry when she wrote it. It went on to say, I had a hard time finding this place. I came all this way to see you, but you were not home. You really disappointed me. This was especially creepy, since I hadn't given out my address to anyone besides my parents at that time. I turned to the next page, and there was a drawing of what looked like she and I holding hands. I looked at the drawing, and we were smiling and gazing deeply in one another's eyes. It was an expertly well-drawn piece of art, but fucking creepy. To draw this well, just from imagination, amazed me. She really had talent. I looked at the hair. It was lifelike. I touched it. And it was real. Real hair glued to the paper. She had glued each strand of hair so carefully to the paper. At first glance, it looked as if it had been drawn. If I had to hazard a guess, I would guess that it was her hair. I'm in the process of moving, but even if I move, I wonder if she'll be able to track me down again. I have been thinking about what would have happened if I was home that night. It really creeps me out. And don't worry though, guys. I keep checking my doors and windows are shut and locked, but these days, I'm a bit freaked out every time I leave the house. I wear a face mask just in case she might not recognize me instantly. I know it's a bit silly, but I'll let you guys know if anything else happens. Note, there have been no further posts. I hope we can assume that nothing further happened. But who knows? This happened when I was living at university. I'm a female, and at the time I was living alone. I was living in a really small town called Higashikawa Kuchin. My home phone was ringing. I answered it. A voice asked, Is this Emily? I'm calling from Higashikawa Kuchin Hospital, the only hospital in this particular town. We spoke for a while, and he said he was a doctor who specialized in medicine. And so it came at the time coronavirus was at its peak in Japan. This seemed to be some sort of courtesy call, and I was happy enough to listen to the doctor's advice. The only thing was, I didn't know this doctor, and I had never had an appointment with him. Usually, when a doctor calls, or you call your doctor, they know your name, your address, etc. And of course, the doctor should have all the information about your last visit as well. He asked me a few questions, and I confirmed the answers and everything seemed above board. Then he asked me to participate in a questionnaire about my personal life. I thought, why not? If it helps people during this coronavirus pandemic, it can only be a good thing, right? So he began to ask me some questions. It was okay, but it went weird pretty quick. 
It began with some inoffensive and non-intrusive questions, like, for example, Have you had a cold or cold-like symptoms lately? Have you been to the hospital lately? Then his line of questioning changed. He asked, Do you dress in light clothes? What are you currently wearing? Then he asked, You know that uh, breast cancer is on the increase at the moment as well. What, what cup size? Are you at the moment? What sort of bra are you wearing? I gasped. The doctor then said, I think I need to pay you a home visit. I'll be there in seven minutes. He then hung up. I stood there shocked, gripping the phone. Then I bolted out of the front door. I stayed with a friend that night, and when I went back to my place, I was really glad to see that it hadn't been burgled. I'm an idiot. I didn't call the police to make a report. But the more I thought about that creepy call, the more I got frightened. This was not some guy just trying to get his rocks off. This was not a heavy breather call, not some neck beard either. This guy was methodical. What spooked me was the fact that he said he would be at my apartment within seven minutes. That really stood out to me on the call. It was really precise. I checked Google Maps and found that the hospital was over 15 minutes away. Weird. I didn't get a call like that again, though. It was an incredible relief, as it had been playing on my mind and making me look over my shoulder everywhere I went. As time went by, my feelings of fear towards the guy who called turned to feelings of anger. I didn't want to live a life scared. My friend suggested that if I really wanted to figure out what that call was about, that I should just ask the phone company. I did, and we found a call came from a payphone. The payphone was pretty close by, about seven minutes away. Half a year had passed, and I still had that creepy call in the back of my mind. Then one day, my home phone rang just as I was heading to work. I picked it up. Hi, I'm from NTT. This is a cell phone company. We've been trying to get in touch with you. As I understand, there's been a bit of a dip in service in this area. We just wanted to get in touch with you to see if you're experiencing any issues. I was in a rush, and I didn't have time for this, so I said I couldn't help. He then said he would call back at a more convenient time. I said I wouldn't be free till after six. Thank you for agreeing to call back. Please, could you let me know your cell phone number, and I will personally call back after 6 p.m., he said. I was hesitant because of what happened before, so I asked, Why don't you give me your information? Then I can call you back when I get home from work. How about that? Dial tone. Was this happening all over again? When I went to work and I told my boss about it, he decided that we should call the cops. Whoever was doing this was definitely trying to get me whilst I was home alone, I guessed. I didn't feel safe anymore. I had no idea if I was being watched at home. I was flinching every time the doorbell rang. I decided to move house. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm safe now. Maybe the guy from the hospital and the guy from NTT are the same person, but I don't know. I was bored, so I googled my own name. A bit dumb really, but I guess we have all done it. I found a bunch of pages with my full name on it, maybe 10 or so, mainly LinkedIn pages or Facebook profiles, people with totally different lives to mine. Then I found a blog, it was called my full names page. It was a simple blog, didn't look very professionally made either, just a private blog kind of thing, maybe like a diary. It was quite interesting as the person who ran the blog was about the same age as me and had the same interests and hobbies as me. As I scrolled through the blog, I noticed that there were five of six regular commenters, nothing special at all. Yet somehow, I found myself checking in on the blog from time to time, watching for new content. It was like reading a diary. One post caught my attention, and it went like this. Ah, 
It was a hot one today, but it was a great day to watch soccer and see Japan win. Something like that. I can't remember. What was striking was the fact that it was very similar to what I did that day. I watched the soccer that day, and the admin of the blog must have been in the same stadium. Of course, I chalked this up to a coincidence and nothing more at that time. A very bad move on my part. The next day, I checked the blog and it read, hmm, Having a bad day today. I messed up at work. This was odd because I was down that day due to making a mistake at work too. Then after, the day after, and the day after, I kept checking the blog and noticing more and more coincidences and similarities between me and the author or admin. It was like reading a blog about my life. It was weird. Another post said, After work, I bought a CD and then ate curry for dinner in a restaurant. Okay, now I knew it wasn't a coincidence. As the days turned to weeks, I started to get paranoid. The owner of the blog received birthday wishes from the few who commented. And yeah, you might have guessed, same birthday as me. I should have taken that as a sign to quit looking at that blog, but I didn't. My curiosity got the best of me, and I decided to comment, using a pseudo name, of course. But when I went to write, I realized that it was just a bulletin board, a page that you cannot interact with despite the page having comments. This was weird, but I wanted to find out what this page was about. It was so eerie, and I sent an email to the admin saying, Hey, nice to meet you. I have the same name as you, and I often visit this site. Something like that. A pretty bland email. The next day, I decided to check on the page, but it had been deleted. That was pretty creepy. I then went to my emails, and I got a reply from the admin, and all it said was, Found you. I got the hell out of my apartment, and I am now staying with a friend. I will post more soon if anything happens, but I hope it's just a prank or something. Big thank you to Miss Creepy Tales. Make sure you head over to her channel to find not only fantastic content, but another collaboration with me and her. Thank you so much to everyone who comments, and likes, and shares. As always, if you have a suggestion for content, please leave it below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.